Hello and welcome to yet another End Engine video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new object that is based upon the sprite file. And I'm also going to show you how to make a sprite move. So we're going to start by just jumping into where we ended last. We managed to create a sprite and we draw it to to our screen. As we circle new sprites. And we managed to run the game and we added a white background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new a new class file. This will be our object and we're also going to name this circle. This is going to be the object that we're going to move across the screen screen. So this is what we will have in the code file. What we want to do is that we want to extend our circle extends as a sprite. This means that it will inherit all the properties of a sprite object so it will, func it will function in the same way. So we want to import a sprite object and now we will have to add a constructor and we're going to use the same constructor that we used to create our sprite before which is with the parameters x, y and the text object and then vertex buffer object manager. As you can see as we did over here x, y, the actual image and this dot get vertex buffer object manager. So if we were to create this object in the same way that we created the sprite before it would function the exact same way. But that would be kind of unnecessary because then we could just create an ordinary sprite. So we're going to add something to this. We're going to override which basically means that we will implement an method from the sprite object. And this is going to be the protected void on managed update. Basically this is going to happen every so called step event as every time the screen updates this event is going to happen. It should be a lowercase unmanaged update. And a final float p seconds elapsed and then super dot p seconds elapsed. Sorry, dot on managed update p seconds elapsed. So now we have the method that is going to be called every time. So if we were to, for example, do this, this dot my x, the position of our current, the current position and x axis for our circle, plus equals two, we will increase it by six. So every update we're going to increase it by 6. Now we don't want to create a sprite. As we did before, we, changed, we will change it to circle. So we are going to create a new circle at the 32, 32 position. We're going to give it the same image and we're also going to do this. Private, going to private circle. And now we're going to try and run it. I'm using a new program called TeamViewer to show what happens on my phone. It is much faster than the previous program I used, which was Droid at Screen. So we're going to go ahead and run this application. Here you can see the sprite moving. On the phone it's much more fluent, but I haven't found a way to make it update faster on the screen on the computer. What we're gonna do now is that we're going to create an integer and sorry boolean. Move left and we're gonna set it to false. So if move left not if not move left if move left is false we're going to move right, else if you are supposed to move left, we're going to decrease the exposition. And then we're going to check to see if we have gone further than the screen allows. So if this.mx more than or equal to main activity dot camera underscore with 
Then we will set move left to true. Else if this dot mx less than or equal to zero. If we have moved out to the left of the screen, we're going to set move left to false, which will make us move right. Now because our camera on the screen width isn't public, we can't access it from our circle object. So we're going to have to to change these ones to public. If you want to be able to access one of the variables from another object, you will need to clear it as public. For example, from for now, I can only access camera underscore width and height from the circle object. I can't access the circle object or the texture region or the bitmap our atlas. Oh, sorry, remove those parameter pieces or whatever they're called. And now we're going to, going to see if the circle will bounce to the left to the right. It bounces there, it goes back. And we want to check to if... So it doesn't leave the screen at all to the right, because now it goes out all the way. We would just have to do this. Main activity minus this dot get width which is going to get the width of our image for our circle object that was all for this video it was a bit short but the next video is going to be about animating a sprite and that will prob probably be a bit longer because I will show you how to paint it and make it function properly you can also expect it to be up within a week I'm going to try and upload videos more frequently now because I have more time I'm also working on a secret project which is going which I'm going to show you in about a month or so. And I think you're going to be quite happy with it. I'm actually quite excited myself. But anyways, thank you all for watching. If you liked the videos please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It would really help a lot. And I will hopefully see you in the next video.